Hello everyone. So today we are going to discuss a question of the Ames May 2018 paper. Uh, the subject that's going to be discussed is microbiology. The question was asked from microbiology. And so let's begin the discussion. This is the 15th question that I'm going to discuss with you today. The question asked, a person is suffering from diarrhea and had a stool examination done for the same and uh, the following structure was uh, observed. And this picture was given to us in the exam. And which of the following is the drug of choice of the following condition? And the options given to us were praziquantil, pyrantel palmoid, albendazole, or mebendabazole. Now, as you can all see, this in the stool examination, uh, this is essentially an egg of a parasite, and they're asking what's the drug of choice for that parasite. Now, in the recent exams, stool examination for cysts and ova and eggs has become extremely important. So it's very important to discuss uh, the cysts and the ova of other parasites. So the first one that I'm going to discuss with you is tinea. This is the egg of tinea. Now, as you can see, it has a shell. It has a shell. It has an embryo in it. These are the radial striations. These, as you can see in this, these are the radial striations that are present. And inside, there are three pairs of hooklet. This is one, two, and three. One, two, and three. There are three pairs of hooklet that are present. So this is the egg of tinea. And as you can see, it's yellow in color. This yellow color is because of the present, because it's bile stained in nature. So the egg of tinea is circular. It has three pairs of hooklets, it's bile stained in, bile stained in nature, and has presence of radial striations along with hexagon embryo inside it. This is the egg of tinea. Now, this one, this is the egg, this is the egg of diphylobothrum. Latin, or what we commonly know as the fish tapeworm. Now, why is this a characteristic? Is because of presence of something known as the operculum or the lid. As you can see, as compared to the egg of tinea, this egg has a characteristic lid present in it. And diphylobothrum, another important fact to remember about diphylobothrum. Diphylobothrum latum or the fish tapeworm is the, is the largest tapeworm to affect the human body. Now, this egg, this egg is of hookworm. Now, as you can see, it's oval in nature. It's segmented. And it's not bile stained. It's clear as you can see. There is no color of bile. This is not yellowish in color. This one was yellowish in color. This one was also yellowish in color. Both of these were bile stained. Well, egg of hookworm. Now remember, hookworm can be either ankylostoma or Nicotera americanus. It's oval. It's segmented. It's not bile stained. And there is a character. Uh, one characteristic feature is that the shell between the shell and the inside, there's a clear space. The characteristic clear space that's present. The next egg that I'm going to discuss is the pinworm. Again, it's not bile stained. It's not bile stained and it has a characteristic plano convex shape. Pinworm, the scientific name is Enterobius vermicularis. Remember, the egg of pinworm is not found in stool examination per se. We actually use something called the NIH swab around the perianal and the anal area in order to get the pinworm egg and then we see it over a slide because the, it's not excreted out in the feces however it's deposited near the anal area and it causes a lot of scratching and the person then gets order infection by scratching that area and then ingesting the food with it now there's a simple mnemonic for remembering the non bile stained eggs which is really important for as far as an examination is concerned it's neha n e h a with n standing for nicotor e for entrobius h for h nana and a for ankylostoma nicotor and ankylostoma both of these are the hookworm eggs and entrobius is pinworm and h nana is known as a dwarf tapeworm this egg that I'm going to discuss is a fertilized egg of Ascaris. As you can see, again, it's round to oval. Around 40 to 50, 70 into 40 to 50 micrometer in size. And it's surrounded by a really thick, as you can see, it's very thick. The albumin coat outside, the, this coat outside is the albumin coat. It's very, very thick, thick albumin coat outside. And... Uh, 
it's also bile stain it's yellow in color as you can see it's bile stain this egg that i'm going to discuss is the egg of trichuris this is the egg of trichuris or the or uh, it's characteristically barrel shaped as you can see it's barrel shaped in nature with a size of around 50 into 25 micrometer 15 to 25 micrometer and this it has mucus plugs on both sides end and it's also bile stain bile staining is present this is also bile stain mucus plug is present at both the ends this is the egg of trichuris or commonly known as whipworm now the egg that was actually given to us in this condition was that of h nana or the dwarf tapeworm as i discussed in a previous slide that the h nana is a non-bile stained egg as you can see it was non-bile stained it has a characteristic feature again something like tinea that has a three pair of booklets that are present and it also contains polar filaments now th this egg was of h nana so basically the question asked you what is the drug of choice for H nana? Remember, for every tapeworm, for every cystole, the drug of choice is prasequental, and hence the answer to this question becomes prasequental. Now, let's discuss the uh, drugs that are used in case of helminthic infection. Now, prasequental is a drug of choice for all cystode, except in two scenarios. In case of either hydrated disease or neurocystic circosis, the drug of choice is albendazole, and for fasciola hepatica, the drug of choice is triclobendazole. As far as nematodes are concerned, as like Ascaris or the hookworm or uh, the uh, the trichuris for all of them albendazole is the drug of choice for river uh, river blindness and strongyloides uh, river blindness is caused by a organism known as oncocerca volvularis and strongyloides the drug of choice becomes ivermectin Ivermec ivermectin can also be used for vucheria and brugia which cause filaria for filaria, the drug of choice is DEC or diethyl carbamazepine. Uh, while ivermectin can also be given for Vucheria and Brugia, but it only acts on microfilaria. It only acts on microfilaria. While DEC is effective both for adults and microfilaria. So, uh, as far as drugs for helminths is concerned, prasequental is the drug of choice for all cystodes, except albendazole is given for neurocystis causes and hydrated disease for nematodes the drug of, cho drug of choice is albendazole so for example if the similar question is repeated and instead of giving a hookworm uh, instead of giving h nana egg they give you an egg of let's say ascaris this is this is the egg of ascaris or the round worm and they ask you what is the drug of choice in that condition in that condition albendazole will become the right answer instead of prasequental if they give you another cestode Remember, for all cystoid, the drug of choice is prasequental, except until unless they are asking neurocystic psychosis or hydrated disease. Thank you. Hi. So, I hope you guys enjoyed my video. Please subscribe to my channel if you want such further updates on the AIMS May 2018 paper. I will be discussing one or two questions of the paper every day. Share it with your friends who you think might benefit from these videos. So, thank you and have a nice day.